You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. And I said, well, just because you keep saying D10 doesn't mean I know what you're talking about. Hello and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week I'm joined by the old, 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 old friend, Mist. Hello. Not so much of the old, thank you. Okay, I can't help time. <laughs> What have you got for us this week? Well, this week I'm talking about Sam Smith's latest venture and then we have a game to play in our game of the week. And that's before we find out what Mist has been up to in his extracurricular activities. <laughs> but on screen now you can see our social media info. Just search for at the Cud TV. And as people who've popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. <laughs> Pooping. Pooping? Pooping. Pooping, yeah. One of your favourite activities to do when you're on your own, isn't it? But, uh, there's nothing wrong with a good, satisfying poop. Correct, as long as you're at home mm. or in a toilet. Mm. Unlike the time scene. Anyway, um, have you ever done a ghost poop? A ghost poo? Ghost poo. Isn't that just another name for a fart? No, that's a fart. A ghost poo is when you go to the toilet, mm -hmm. you have a poo, mm -hmm. and then you go to wipe and look down because you always have a look. Oh, yes. It's not there. Yes. Yeah, good. And, it, and it's usually a very satisfying... There's a good noise, and it's like, you look down, it's gone. It's like, oh, it's ghost yeah. poop. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, a doctor has confirmed that a ghost poop is a very good thing. Right? Because it, it proves that your diet is good. OK. You're well hydrated. OK. Right? And that you are expelling at the right velocity. Right? If, like a cannon. Like a cannon. Well, if it's, if it's too quick, it doesn't go disappearing. It goes mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes. It explodes, right? If it's too much hard work, it just kind of takes forever to go down. Yes. But if it disappears around the U-bend, it's got a good weight, a good consistency, a good amount of water in it, so it's just disappearing itself. Like, like a bobsleigh team. Like a bobsleigh team. Mm. Yes, a pooey poo. <laughs> um, so I, I, when I thought, found out that a ghost poo was a good thing, right, and why it's a good thing, I was quite proud of myself. Yeah. Why do you have a, a... I have a sufficient number of ghost poops. Yeah, I have, I have the occasional ghost poop. The occasional ghost poop, you The see. occasional ghost poop. Mm. You need more fibre in your diet. Mm. Yeah. What are you about to say? <laughs> I usually find I have them the day after a, um, a, a, mm. a, an enjoyable evening. No. A cum fart is not a ghost no, poop. No, 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 no. Substantially after, but what's the... The capacity's still there, shall we say. Right, OK. So when, you, when you're still fully lubed? No, no, not still fully lubed, but the, 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 spa the, the accommodating space. When you're gappy. When you're gappy. Anyway, um, celebrities in foodstuffs is where we're moving to. OK. Right, I'm slightly encroaching on your territory here. Slightly. OK. Have you ever witnessed a celebrity in a foodstuff? A celebrity in a food, like when you see images of like Christ. Toast Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, seen, I've seen Steak Trump recently. Steak Trump? Steak Trump, yeah. Okay. It's just what a steak that looks in the shape of Trump. What, fat flubbing? Well, the, the fatty ridge of it was like his uh, bouffant hair and then oh, okay. there's just like the outline of his face and the oh. and yeah. yeah. Uh, Witnessed anything in personal life, or is that something you've just seen a picture of? Just seen a picture of, yeah. Okay. Um, well, this is something a little bit more enjoyable. In cake. In cake? In cake. Right. This is a man who has found the image of pop superstar and day royalty, the late, great Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson, right, um, was... His image was found in cake. And this is the image that they believe it was. So make a mental note of that. There he is. See? There's Michael Jackson in cake. Which part of cake is... That looks like the... the it's been circled. Yeah, I mean, but that's like the remains of a cake. That's like very... It's at the end of a cake. It is the end. It's, it's the, the Did cake... I say, this is a brand new shiny cake that's not been touched by human mouth? I thought it'd be like sliced through, like, oh, there yeah. he is. No, this is... No, no, no. This no, is no. a boat, load of crumbs and cream at the bottom of a guy's bowl. Huh? This is a load of crumbs and cream at the bottom of somebody's bowl. That's cake. It's cake crumbs and cream. Anyway, but there he is. You can quite clearly see his eyes and his nose and his mouth. And that's his hair at the top. And is this before or after he went to see the plastic surgeon? Oh, it's definitely an after. <laughs> um, I think that's probably why he went. Yeah. Um, it's not at all in the shape of a cat, 
which I saw. Little, oh, pussy cat. Oh. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. I said a cat, right? Maybe a ghost. Yeah. Right? Elvis. Um, all these reasonable ones that you can see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you were looking weird that like I said Elvis there. Yeah, I can't see Elvis it, either. Sunglasses. Yeah. Right? Elvis hair. Caught in a trap. There's no way out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. It's definitely. a stretch. I want to know how much pot is in this cake. Mm. Because it's definitely one of those mm, little bit high, I can see Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. And, f yeah. Because it's so far into the devastation of eating that cake, it's... The devastation of eating a cake. And if you've ever been devastated while eating a cake, wrong word there, miss, wrong word, share it with us at the Cud TV on social media. <laughs> and that brings us to our story of the week. Now, have you ever f***ed <laughs> a cake? No, that's not where we're going. <laughs> because we know the answer is yes, right? Uh, <laughs> not denying it. Have we seen this? Not seen this. OK. Do you have any phobias? Mm, not really. Not really? Not really. Spiders? I don't like them, but then I'm not scared of them. I can okay. put a glass on one and throw it out. OK, that kills them, murderer. Um, so, this is a story about someone that was triggered by chocolate and realising that they have a phobia that's triggered by chocolate. OK. OK. Um, and basically, patterns in things. All right. Now, this is um, um, trifophobia, OK, Ooh. which Ooh. is the phobia of, of holes and patterns. OK. Now, what's what happened... What kind of chocolate is that? So, it's a, a Reese's peanut butter cup that's bloomed. So, if chocolate gets hot and cold repeatedly... Yeah. ...right, it starts to get this foam on it. Right. Which is called bloom, which is where the fat... Dis like, oh, raises, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. as it raises, it crystallises and causes a pattern. Right. This can also happen in caramels... Yeah, and yeah, yeah. ...and that's what's happened here. OK. It looks... Okay. It looks like a... It doesn't look... It doesn't look tasty. Calcified pipe, does. doesn't it? So as, as it's basically got hot and cold, the, the sugar crystals have crystallised at the top and become a pattern. OK. OK. Now, someone with trypophobia was triggered by that. Yeah. Right? Can't cope with that, can't cope with patterns. Yeah. Right? And it's a genuine medical thing, right? So whenever they see somebody in a paisley shirt, they scream and run away. They, they can be really triggered by that small... Wow. Reoccur it's more reoccurring natural patterns that mm. has the problem. OK. The advice that the GP has come back with, what do you think that is? Best way of dealing with this? Stick it in your mouth, you won't see it. Eat the chocolate as soon as you can so it doesn't bloom. So if you buy chocolate, just eat it so it yeah. doesn't bloom. Which yeah. I thought was brilliant advice, right? And advice Mr. has already been living by. Um, I've, I've lost about five pounds. I mean, that's from the flu, but still. Flu. Um, <laughs> you have a hangover and it's the flu, right? <laughs> Not denying it. Not denying it, OK? <laughs> but these things happen in, in, like, medical conditions as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you have a look, it, it can even happen on your, your own person. Oh! Oh, oh, no! And that's a skin condition that I can't look at. Oh! Right? Where your skin raises and causes digital holes. OK, we can, we can take that off the screen now. But that's trip of Oh, that's, that's, like that's... A that's like one of the monsters in D&D. &D. Oh, no, it's worse. It's just awful. Oh. But, yeah, that's what... That, that feeling that we both just had is what people see when they, they see these patterns. Well, that's the thing. Like, when you said, have you got any phobias? Like, most of the common ones, like, yeah, I'm a little bit scared of spiders. Yeah, I'm scared of falling from heights. Yeah, I'm scared of this, that and the other. But in a reasonable way, I can get over it. Mm -hmm. It's not like a full-on phobia. Then, yeah. Than, yeah. But when anybody sees something like that, mm. Yeah, but that, that reaction is what people with trifophobia see when they see any of those patterns. Oh, gosh. Right? So, so when you see those, those small holes in people's hands and things, I'm not looking... Oh, at... no! Gallery, behave yourselves. Right, because the gallery are evil, right? They, they keep looking at it going, ah, I'm all right with that, right? That's because they're soulless people. Well... You see, one of them is still chatting away, the other one is being very quiet, so I believe they're throwing up. <laughs> um, you're right there, Paul. Deadly silent. Not good. Not good. Right. Uh, that's what happens with, with people with trypophobia. But that's all from the buzz this week. Um, thanks for that, Mike. Uh, it's truly horrific. And talking about truly horrific things, coming after this short break, Miss brings us the celebrity news in showbiz.
Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time for Mr. Put Away His Porn on His Tablet as he brings us the celebrity news in showbiz. Are you a fan of the series The Traitors? No. You don't enjoy The Traitors? I've not watched it. Oh, it's so good. So people were telling me how addictive it is. And it's like, oh, no, mate, you've got to watch it. You've got to watch it all. I'm like, mm. It is massively addictive. And it was a, a sleeper hit a couple of Christmases back. Sleeper hit? Well, yeah. No, it that wasn't. It's not like when someone blows cock up your ass so you're asleep. No. It's one of those shows that you don't know what it's really about, maybe isn't advertised very well or, or given much prominence. Okay. And then suddenly everybody is talking about it. It just grew on you. It had a very, very weird release schedule. It was like three episodes and then a whole week without an, another episode. It was, okay. it was very, very... But it was very much binge-worthy TV, so you just... You wanted another one as soon as you could get hold of it. OK. Um, it's a wonderfully fun show. Uh, they just got a lot of contestants into an old castle into Scotland. Okay. Uh, some of them are marked out as traitors, but they don't know who's who. They have various different adventures during the day as team challenges to earn up very money, etc. And the traitors meet at night and decide who to kill off. Okay. And then every day, everybody gets around the table and tries to figure out who the traitors are. It's a very simple format. It works really well. And it's hosted in the UK by Claudia Winkleman. Mm -hmm. okay. Very, very fun show. But there's also an Australian version. That's very fun. And... Uh, US version, which is more 50% um, competitors, 50% celebrities just mixed in, okay. like reality TV stars. And that is set in the same Scottish castle, but that's hosted by Alan Cumming. Okay, I like Alan Cumming. Mm -hmm. He's really fun. He's such mm -hmm. a fun actor. I've loved him since he was in the high life. I love that sitcom. It's really hard to get hold of. I've got it. Oh, give me a copy, give me a copy. Yeah. Can't give you a copy, that's piracy and that's illegal. Um, but you can lend it. I could. I choose not to. So, Alan Cunning just choose, uh, choose up the scene with um, presenting this. And as I said, with this version, there are celebrities in it. This is the third season that's come okay. up. And we've not even seen the second season yet. OK. But the casting for the third season is already out. And it includes Bob the Drag Queen. Love Bob the Drag Queen. Yep. Bob the Drag Queen is Bob. going to be in it. We absolutely love her. Um, and who's the old man? Uh, well, the old man, mm -hmm. one of ours. Okay. Royalty. Okay. I, I actually did not know this. That is Lord Ivor Mountbatten, second mm -hmm. cousin to our King Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's the first out member of the game. He's the first out member of the monarchy. Okay. Yeah. Royal family, surely, rather than monarchy. Is there a technical difference? Yeah, monarchy is the is the the ruling people. He's the lord, so he's not one of the ruler. He's a member of the royal family. So. Member of the royal family, yeah. then. Um, but yeah, not the first gay lord though. Many gay lords before now. Um, Bu um, um, lord from Bewley, the calm place. Lord Montague, famously homosexual in the seventies and eighties. Um, yes, but were they out? Yes. He was outed in a scandal. Oh! Yeah, you need to watch that next one. It's really informative. I will have to. Yeah. It's a gay history I'm not aware of. Yeah. But yes, it's a very, very fun show, and if you haven't checked it out, I mean, we haven't even had series two of the thing, and that's one's got peppermint in it. So it's a very enjoyable show. show. When it comes out over here, you should enjoy it. Okay, I shall, I shall make note. Um, so next, Sam Smith. We love them. You love them? We love them. I'm not a big fan. Like, the, some of the songs I like, some of the, but they get a lot of abuse for no good reason. They really, get a lot of abuse for like living their own life and yeah. enjoying themselves and do what they want to do. And that's why I have great respect for them. They had a bit of a bump when they lost a load of weight mm -hmm. and they started fat-shaming people, right? But, you know what, they went, you know, I was made a mistake, I was wrong, I've been fat myself, oh, shit, I'm fat again now. Um... And it's like they're it's just, a little bit like being an ex-smoker, though, isn't it? It is, but they they, they realised they made a mistake, went with it, and they do so much hard, they do so much for the community and sharing their experiences and just living their authentic life. I think they're a role model for most people. Yeah, I I think that's part of what the root of why some people don't like them is mm -hmm. because it is a little uh, the, there's 
seeds of preachy, seeds of smarmy, mm. seeds of smug. Um, and just being a bit in, in people's way. But sod then. But then you've got you know, exactly. Nicki Minaj with a tits and arse out every exactly, two minutes. It's the exact exactly. same thing. Like I haven't person. got time for it. Yeah. I understand it, but I haven't got... I, haven't, yeah. I don't align myself with it. Anyway, one of the things that they're doing at the moment, outside of uh, the, the hit-making songs, mm -hmm. they're going to start founding a charity. OK. Called The Pink House. And it's it's there's not much information out there. We're not too sure whether they're creating a physical space, mm -hmm. like an actual pink house or something virtual, but they're looking to create a space for the queer community so they can collaborate, be artistic, creative, and find a safe space, most predominantly, okay, uh, to make sure that there is somewhere that is open and available to anyone who's queer 24-7. See, that's, and that's what I mean by they are inspirational because they do stuff like that. Mm, I think that's yeah. pretty sweet. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant way of taking your, your notoriety and your attention from the press and doing something really good. Yeah. Hats so, off to them. One hundred percent. And so it's, this is a very early thought then. It's yeah. They, they've started talking about the reason they're calling it the Pink House is because actually apparently they grew up in a house called the Pink House. Okay. Um, I didn't realise that uh, their father was uh, Rod Hull. I mean, that was the pink windmill, wasn't it? Oh, that windmill. was the pink windmill. But yeah, emu for a sibling. It explains quite a bit. Back, back to having a fist up someone anyway. <laughs> uh, every episode. <coughs> Interesting. Moving on. Um, a, an actress who's done quite well for herself recently. She's been in a few big hits. Baby Reindeer being the main one that's hitting all the channels and discussions and mm -hmm. chat shows at the moment. Um, she's also in The Outlaws, which is quite a fun sitcom that I enjoy. Um, Jessica Gunning. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of ours. Uh, she actually, is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this, this is why it's news at the moment. She actually came back, she came out in November 20, 2022. Okay. So... A, a good it was while. A while ago, two years ago, year and a half. Yeah. Um, but she was talking about it recently, and she said that her not coming out was nothing to do with like shame or repressing anything. Mm -hmm. She had lots of gay friends and hung out with gay people. She just didn't think that that was her. Okay. Um, but the moment she realised is just the most amazing thing. Anyway, and, and I think a lot of um, lesbians would would have. Mm be very, very jealous okay. about her having this experience. Obviously, she's an actress, so she was in a play, and the moment that she realised that she might be gay was when she had to kiss honorary lesbian, Kate Blanchett. OK. <laughs> I mean, if you were going to have that moment of that's sexual a, that's awakening... A, that's a realisation moment. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. I mean... I'd, I'd have a problem doing it every night if it was like, oh, no, I find you really attractive now. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> like, what? That's not what the character does. No, but I'm horny. Right. <laughs> Final night, it's just grab a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I did not know that she was part of the queer community. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Well, she said that she always felt different, and that's a feeling that we all understand and know. Um, or at least in the days where it was a lot harder. Mm -hmm. But she said she felt that was more because she was a larger lady. Right. And it wasn't until certain experiences, and Snogging came and answered, um, that made her realise, oh, oh, no, it's not the fat thing. It, it's not being chunky. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it's me quivering quim. She... It's me quivering quim? Yeah. She had a twitch. It's not... Oh, it's not because I'm large, it's because I've got a quivering quim. Yeah. You need to qualify that with while snogging Kate Blanchett. Well, there were other other instances that of she was referring other, to. Just like randomly just like, sat on the number four bus going, uh, you know, you can have I a... must be a lesbian. Why, me quim's quivering. <laughs> you can like have a ladies sapphic. on a bus. You can have a sapphic, you can have a sapphic moment on a bus. I just I just had this image of two old ladies on a bus with the Ray Max and a little shopping cart. And the other one going, oh, what? Must be lesbian. Why? My quim's all of a quim. <laughs> oh, this is me. Ding. Right. It's like <laughs> other things that get your quim quivering. Well, you know, don't you always, when you get on the bus, hope that you get the seat above the back wheel? No. I do. 
but that's because I've got a vibrator that's diesel powered. So I don't need a bus. It's like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my <laughs> must be knowing his garden again at three in the morning in his bedroom. Well, you can't the charge it by dim. electricity because otherwise everything starts flickering. Yeah, the lights start dimming. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's all from the showbiz this week. Thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to think of a quivering quim. Um, but stick around, because coming up next, we have our Game of the Week. You're watching Chew in the Cud, and this week we're going to play Lazy Susan's Question Roulette. And this is for the man who once fell off a stage, injured his ankle, and then had to sit there with corn on his leg all weekend. It's Miss Off Your Pop. <laughs> Forgot my crutch. Finding it all week, haven't you? Ooh. Oh, it's falling out, you know? Ooh. Oh, oh. Game of the Week. So, Miss is going to spin the Lazy Susan. Okay, going to ask me a question. Right, but for some reason we're not having movie questions because someone basically lost them. Are you ready there, Mist? Um, I am ready with the Lazy Susan of Quiz, yes. Lazy Susan question roulette. Well, that, that's the game. Yeah. Are you ready? I, I'm waiting for you to start spinning. Here we go. Okay. No movie, no movie, no movie. Oh, we're landing on general knowledge. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. So... What is a double-decker? It's either a bus or a chocolate bar. Um, both would be correct. Uh, that was a bit easy. Let's, let's try something a little bit more, uh, more complicated. No, no, no. You've asked the question. Now move on. Well, OK. You okay. picked an easy question. That's not my fault. Fine. All right. Oh, no movies, no movies, general Oh, it's general knowledge again! Oh, how, how strange. Where is the Rosetta Stone? Now, where is it? Where should it be or where was it found? Where is things. it? Is it currently in the British Museum? That would be correct. Well done. Where should it be? Uh, probably Greece. Egyptian Museum. Oh, Egyptian Museum. Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Well, th there's a good argument for... Uh, obviously, getting hold of it in the first place was a bit naughty and, and keeping hold of it and all that, blah, 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 blah. But is it in the best place for it to be maintained no. and looked after? No. It's stolen property. It belongs back with the people who own it, not with someone that found it. Right, well, OK. Uh, <laughs> I can't say yeah, very much on that subject, um, and I'll tell you why after the show. Uh, you probably stole it. What movies, not movies, music. Music, okay. This makes the people come together. It does, rhythmically. Oh, ooh, okay, this one's All good. All right, ooh, a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit more. No, no, it's no. not one of those, but I think you will get this one, um, okay. because you have mentioned the before. Who sang the James Bond theme song for Spectre? Spectre? Mm hmm That's the one with the thing. It is the one with the thing. What's it called? You chop it in the throat and it changes colour. Octopus. Oh, no, that's Octopussy. No, the ring had an octopus on it. Um, yeah, that's because that's a symbol for Spectre. Sam Smith. That's the one! Well done! Took me a while. I had to go all the way back to uh, Diamonds Are Forever. <laughs> Did you work your way through them chronolog chronologically? Chronology? Chronology? <laughs> Anology? That means you're a scientist. <laughs> More general knowledge. Okay. Here we go. Um, oh, how old was William, William Pitt the Younger when he became the youngest Prime Minister in 1783? Twelve. No. Double it. You know, I can't do maths. 24. Which is very, very young. Yeah. Barely. Oh, hey. Well, it's not you... very, very young. It's quite young. 12 would have been very, very young. 12 would have been incredibly young. At least it's a little bit better than the current American system. Let's say that much. Oh, music. Music. Okay, here What's we go. There's cheating going on here. Oh. Oh, okay. Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins, featured on the soundtrack of which 1980s movie? 
Welcome to the kingdom. Um, I'm picturing it now. It's a small man. I would say it's probably the less famous song from that movie. It's the small man. It, it, there is a small man, yeah. Small man. Yeah, very much. Then there's the, the Katie that used to snog Dawson. It doesn't snog Dawson anymore. Thought no. was married to him, but he's not married to her anymore. Scientologist Tom T. You, you, you're absolutely in the right area. Top Gun. That's the one. Well done. I just explained how my brain works. You're quite good at this. Slightly scary, that, isn't it? Well, if we give you the time to go round oh, the houses, oh, yeah. Katie, they used to snog Dawson. Oh, Dawson's creepy. General Rapids. knowledge again. I'm away for my life to be over. I want to know right now. Pacing's Ooh, not Oh, okay. Not listening. Oh, who wrote Robinson Crusoe? An author. What is the name of that author? Oops. No, no, oops. Oops is a different thing. What is the name of the author that wrote Robinson Crusoe? Yep. Bob Ross. No. So I know it's not Bob Ross. I'm just saying the words because I can. <laughs> it's not it would, William Defoe, but it sounds French. It does remember. sound French. The it, name but he's not French, French. But yeah, I can't remember. Come on. It's Daniel Defoe. Daniel Defoe. Mm. William Defoe's slightly younger brother. Do you think the relation of William Defoe yes. as in the modern actor? Yes, I do. Ooh. Do you know that for a fact? No, I, you just asked, do I think? And I said, yes, I do. Music. You can tell I'm doing it very, very gently so I don't end up landing on movies, which we don't have any questions for, or sport, which I hate. Um, okay. Which 1953 movie does Marilyn Monroe perform the song Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend? Do you want to hear the thought process? Go on. Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend was covered by Lily Savage when she did Argos Is a Girl's Best Friend. Mm hmm Because right, you won't touch your gyros if you rub those little blue biros, which now doesn't exist because they use pencils. The name of the film, mm -hmm. right, was where she was a hooker. Well, she wasn't a hooker, she was a gold digger, right? She kept trying to marry men mm -hmm. on a boat with one of her friends. Mm -hmm. The name of the movie escapes me. Oh, the thought process has let you down. No, the thought process is there, just the name of the movie is just a blank. You went round the houses and fell into a cul-de-sac. No, didn't fall into a cul-de-sac. I went there and went, oh shit, I still can't remember the name of the number that I saw. <laughs> it's Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. That's it, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. I described the movie correctly. Let's see what you do with this next question. Uh, and it's general knowledge. <laughs> Do very well avoiding sport. Uh, oh, I don't know this. Mm, not difficult. Oh no, I do know that actually. Okay, but it's very easy for me to say when I've got the answers in front of me. <laughs> um, do do do. Oh. To my birthday in February list. <laughs> okay. This is stupidly easy, but uh, I'll go with the more difficult uh, question. How many inhabitants of how many inhabitants are there in England as of 2018? Thought process incoming. Strap in. So 2016. Now I 2018. 2018. Okay, so I did let below the line, which is where I stopped. I lived on a pound a day in 2016. Okay, and at that point, I knew that the population of Manchester was 1.2 million people. Okay, I counted up all the cities and I got to 14 million people. Okay, I didn't include all the counties, and this is two years later. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a lot of sex. Mm -hmm. Right, that's two lots of nine months of babies popping out plus the year before. So I'm going to say 62 million people. No, no. How many? 55.98 million. So 56? Yeah. And basically. I said how many? You said 68. Right, that's not that many people off. I, 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 yeah, but it's not, I, I was going to say that's close, but it's not, it's not actually that, that close. But it's not awful. It's Closer not than off. you were. It's not like, it, it's just, it's missing the side of the barn, but not by much. It's near the it's barn adjacent. I, I don't I don't get a coconut for it. 
No, you're not going. But I get, I get a key ring. Have we got time for one last question? We've got, we've got time for more. Keep going. So, so keen of finishing this game. Oh, that's because we just landed on sport. <laughs> we didn't know that before, huh? Right, OK, here we go. Um, complete the following football teams. Wolverhampton. Swans. No, Wanderers. Tranmere. Park. Rovers. Newcastle. Brown. United. Plymouth. Rock. Argyle. Stick around, because coming up next, we look at why Mist has been indisposed recently in Spotlight. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now this is the time when we get to know a little about something that Mist has been doing and keeping a great secret in Spotlight. So I am joined by, as usual, Mist, can't get rid of him, a bit like um, <laughs> And then I've got somebody to the right of me as well, hello. Hello. What, who are you? Uh, I'm Zoe. I'm hello Zoe. One of the cast members of the Grim North. The Grim North? The Grim what's North? the Grim North? <laughs> Mist, tell us, what's the Grim North? <laughs> Uh, so I've, I've, I've had a little side project on the go. So, um, you know I'm a massive fan of Dungeons & Dragons. It's, it's come up a couple of times on the show. Uh-huh. And, um, well, we, we have this wonderful TV studio and the guys in the gallery are the wonderful producers of this show. So Directors. Um, directors, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. Uh, <laughs> let's be technical. Let's be technical. Um, but they very, very kindly offered uh, to help me with a little project. Uh, what so is this project? Well, Zoe and a few others um, who are part of uh, this Dungeons and Dragons society that I was a part of, um, we've come together and put, put together an actual play show where we get around the table and play a game of Dungeons and Dragons and just record it for people to see. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, not that fetish night we're talking about. No, no, I don't. I, I, I don't do such kinky things. That's a lie. Okay, so and how did you get involved in this this non fetish night? Uh, so I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons with Mist for a couple of years at a local society, sort of down the road, like literally down the road from where we're filming at the okay, moment. Okay, cool. Uh, so I joined, I think, a little bit before yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. big little bit. Uh, we played a handful of games together, mm -hmm. uh, and then just over six months ago, Miss came to me and said, "I've got an idea for a project. Would like you to be involved." And before he even said what it was, I was like, "Cool, yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> let's go for it." <laughs> what is it? Dungeons and Dragons. I hoped so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he comes up to you and says, "I've got an idea," you always get a bit worried. <laughs> now, uh, I've, now I've done it. Uh -huh. I think I would hesitate next time when he says, oh, "I've got an idea." Oh, hundred percent. You learn from the set for the first time. Um, well, for people that aren't aware of Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, we have mm. a quick clip of what might be in store. You guys can make a Wisdom, Arcana or Nature check. Ooh, so many options. Ooh. I'm a kind and benevolent DM. <laughs> How does a six find you, big boy? I can see a little pussy. Uh, <laughs> he makes it seem like a threat. <laughs> wow, what did the cats do to you? <laughs> Mist hates cats, guys. I am an all-powerful god. <laughs> and they said this was a cat-friendly town. <laughs> Right. And apparently just like happy old lesbians. This person's a monster. <laughs> Ooh. The mist. It's always poo. Wait. Fecal matter and chemical tang. I don't think we can get away with that. <laughs> How <laughs> d, &D. <laughs> I'm a bit spoilt mm -hmm. because I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. Okay. What can people expect from the Grim North? Oh, well... <sighs> This is our first season, The Crest of Files, so we're just kind of establishing the Crest of Files. Okay. Basically, um, it's all set as a parody of modern-day Manchester, only with everything you might expect from Dungeons & Dragons, magic and combat and dragons and monsters and all that kind okay. of stuff, but in a modern-day Manchester, which we call Cresta. We've got this lovely group of private investigators trying to solve the problems that the police can't. Okay. Um, so the police aren't very good anyway. <laughs> well, it is a loving parody of Manchester. We had to be a little bit... Uh... Yeah, there's a couple of uh, semi-cheeky but a little bit on the nose <laughs> references to uh -huh. the world as it stands at the moment. I, I, I do enjoy the game that you have that's referenced in there. Of, of oh, two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. Everybody's crazy for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's not that was that. so on the spot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was not... Pre-planned, pre-rehearsed, no. nothing. Elaine just said it. 
And we all went, okay. oh no, <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> but we've got the rest of the show to film. We can't break down and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of curveballs these guys uh -huh. threw me is absolutely <laughs> insane. So is, is it very scripted or is it just like you're just talking and playing along? It's full on improvisation. So um, I, I'm the DM for the game. Danger so Mouse? Not Danger Mouse, Dungeon <laughs> Master. Or Games Master if you prefer. Um, so I'll have created... Uh, GM. GM, yes. GM. So I will create a scenario, a situation, and the and the players will have their individual characters and their own backstories, etc. And they play that through. But how they play it through, every table will be different every time. You could run the same scenario a million times and be different every time with different players. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. So there's lots of characterization involved. Mm -hmm. Some improvisation. Improvisation word. No, it is. Um, it is, it now. is now. Yeah, I've now created it. Zoe, tell me a bit about your character. Okay, so I play, uh, so in terms of like D&D &D terms, uh, I play as a paladin, uh, who is Oath of the Crown. Uh, what that basically means is it's... A Questions, yeah. What's Question. that mean? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, paladin is a kind of, uh, they're, a, they're a warrior who's taken an oath, basically, so they don't just fight everything. They fight for okay. a cause that they've decided they want to sort of align themselves with. Okay, um, so a bit like me as Asda when they don't have any wine gums left, and I get a bit angry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, cool. You could take that up as your oath and be like, F*** you, Asda. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> what I said, to be fair. <laughs> but my character, uh, her name is Wicker. Uh, she is born and bred Boothstown, which is our sort of nod to Salford. Um, I think it is an old name yeah, for well, Salford, isn't it? It's looking a, at literally the uh, and the council districts, which saying one of them is Boothstown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we sort of decided that's where she would be from um, because the centre of Crestor is not super duper populated. It's a lot of offices and sort of high rise apartments, and she can't afford to live in one of those. Um, she is uh, she is a former podcaster okay. uh, who sort of hung up the headphones when something really awful happened. <laughs> uh, a true crime podcast. True crime podcast, mm. yes. Uh, and she got a little bit too close to an answer uh, mm. that was personally involved, so I had to sort of hang up the headphones and mic and leave it behind mm. for a family's sake. Okay, cool. Uh, and then decided to, well, was sort of called up by Grim, the sort of leader of Mm -hmm. from investigations, the guy who set it up. Okay. Uh, took that up as a full-time job. So a bit Charlie's Angels-esque. Yeah, yes. very much. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a theme with that. Basically, the whole concept is there's this unseen character, Aloysius Grimm, uh -huh. and very much like uh, Charlie and Charlie's Angels, only speaks to them via the phone. And there's some very nice phone conversations that happen <laughs> with Grimm. <laughs> um, and they'll give them the missions and send them out. Okay, but it's not just it's not just one it's not Wicker and Mist. Not on her own. There's, no. there's other people there. Who are the other characters? Um, so well, we've got uh, Elaine who plays Arkeza, okay. who's a kobold, which is like a little dragon person. Okay. Um, and as a character, they're like a working class mum. Um, very rough, very northern, very no nonsense, very about the community, and and very very funny. <laughs> the most funny, the most funny. <laughs> then we because you know somebody. You, yeah. I guarantee, if you watch the show and you are from Manchester, you know somebody, or somebody's mum <laughs> is Arkeza. Right. You, you've met this person, so it's gorgeous to watch her to watch her act it out. <laughs> uh, what about other characters? Who else is in it? Uh, so we've got. Uh, Dizzy Ward, uh, mm -hmm. who's played by Terran. Um, they are a half orc artificer, so they are this ginormous half orc woman okay. uh, who is obsessed with tinkering with chemicals and tinctures and alchemy and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. She gets she gets into lots of high drinks as well <laughs> <laughs> throughout the show. Yeah, and Terran's like very good at uh, doing describing because there's lots of uh, gadgets mm -hmm. and trinkets and, and mechanics that they do, and uh, they have just beautiful descriptions mm. of those kind of things when they pull those out of the hat. Um, then we also have Yas who um, plays a jail who's kind of like this dark, mysterious drow. Works as a barber, mm -hmm. but has a secret delinquent past, mm -hmm. a little bit shady. Um, and we might find some more about their history as the show goes on. They've all got um, very interesting histories, but we'll, uh, we might see if we get a season two uh, where we delve into those a little bit. 
Mm, exciting. But uh, going back to season one, mm -hmm. recently launched. Yes, yes, yes we're out on YouTube now. Exciting. Yes, yeah. very exciting. Um, but even more exciting because there was booze involved. Um, <laughs> I got to go along to your launch night. Yes, you did. Yeah, we, we've got a couple of, of what people thought. I actually thought it was amazing. I had no idea of the setting. I was not expect. I didn't. Yeah, I, I literally have words. It was genuinely very cool to see it outside of a medieval setting. This is wild but awesome. And yeah, honestly, great. Loved it. Very funny. And can't wait for episode two. Just cracking everyone up. But just Elaine's one-liners <laughs> and the timing on those. Um, wonderful. It was so good. It was really funny. I was actually quite surprised. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'd like to hear. There you go. The crest of files from the Grim North. Quite surprising. So it looks like everyone had a really good time. Yeah. Lots yeah, of really good night. feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I went there. And I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons person. It's not for me. I've mm -hmm. played the game in the past. There was wine involved. Um, but it was still a good watch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could oh, get I'm swept glad. up in the narrative sort of thing without going, oh, why are you rolling a dice? I don't get it, right? But getting that <laughs> whole, oh, you're having that conversation or watching the story unfold. Yeah, and ho hopefully there's enough fun in there and it, it's not like one of the massive shows that can go on like for four hours and there's good humour and good a good plot going on. Um, everybody will have to guess who actually... Have harmed who actually's harmed the cats. Um, the missing, <laughs> you know exactly what happened to the cat. Oh, exactly what happened to the cat. <laughs> if you check our merch store, there is a shirt on it that says "Mist hates cats." <laughs> if he does. He's a bad man. <laughs> I've, I've done some very horrible things to these players. <laughs> okay, um, in the story, in the sh in in the playing Dungeons and Dragons, not in real life. He loves pussy, really. Right. Um, big fan. Big, big fan. Yeah. You've stolen your neighbours. I have, I've have not seen them in about five days. You've probably got off back home. That's why. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's on YouTube? Yes. Yes, we've got about six episodes that we've filmed. Okay. And uh, we're in the process of editing them, putting them together. And they'll be releasing one every two weeks over the course of the next three months. Okay, cool. So, so what dates are we looking at for those to come out? Well, the, the key thing is mm -hmm. if, um, if you do like it, go onto YouTube, hit subscribe, and you'll get notifications when the next one is on. So uh, please like, share, subscribe, get it out there. Because if we get uh, enough people liking it and watching it, then that means we get to do more. And I'd really like to do more. Because, uh, oh, you should know what I've got planned for you in season two. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. Yeah, and I think you should be as well. <laughs> season one was a roller coaster. So, season two, terrifying, terrifying fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, well, that's almost the end of the show for now. Just remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV, where you'll also find a link for the Grim North. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.